did not give you any warning that I was doing this, but I did want to get this out for you since I asked the question last week about whether or not you would be interested in learning more about it. Um, so I'm going to have to tag you all in the comments because I went to all the trouble to tag you in the post and it said, nope, you're not allowed and you're disallowed from posting tags now. So I don't know what their problem is. Anyway, I want to talk to you guys about the, the, um, procrastination issue. And I want to talk to you first about the causes of procrastination. Before we go into the question of how to fix it, I want to talk to you about the things you want to do to diagnose yourself first, right? To sort of uh, do a little self-diagnostic, right? So the first thing you want to look at when you're, when you're procrastinating is when you feel into doing it, the idea that you're just going to do it, how do you feel? Not, not, you know, do I want to, do I not want to? I want you to tell me how your body feels, right? So sometimes there's just like no energy, right? Sometimes there's this, ah, oh, I just can't, I just can't, I can't, I can't energy. Sometimes there's this sort of deer in the headlights, oh crap, I don't, I, 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 and you just sort of shut down, right? Each one of those has a different thing associated with it. So if your first response is there's no energy, well, then there probably isn't energy for the thing that you're thinking you should be doing. Sometimes we don't have energy for things because the, the thing that we think we should be doing really needs to not be done right now. And so, you know, paying attention to that is super important and you know honoring it because otherwise you push through you get something done and then something changes and you have to redo the whole thing anyway and had you listened to the fact that there was no energy for the thing you wanted then it would have um it would have worked out better it would have saved you the time and energy the if your response is oh i just can't i just can't i can't i can't then you're burnt you're fried, you're overdone, and you should not be trying to do this thing that you're trying to push yourself to do. At that point, you need to start taking some time off and you need to start putting off giving yourself new things to do until you've completed some of your existing things. This is what I'm doing right now, actually. I am in a completion kick and I am refusing to take on anything new until I have completed three other things. So for every new thing I take on, I have to finish three others. So that's actually helping me a lot because it's reducing my overall um, load of what I'm holding, right? Because I know you guys, you're like overachievers and you're overdoers and you just love to do everything and, you know, say yes to everything. and. You know, you got too many projects going on at once and you know it's true. So don't even tell me that it's not. But the thing that you have to pay attention to is how much of your energy that pulls. Even if something's on the back burner for a while, even if it's just sitting there in the back of your mind, it is holding energy. And so you either need to decide to not do it or you need to decide to get it done. And until you do one of those two things, it holds a certain amount of your energy in it. And so it's super important to really just sit down and lay out everything that's holding your energy. I did this once, <laughs> 10 years ago, I bought myself a copy of Microsoft Project and I sat down and I wrote down every project that I had and some of them were as big as do, entire, do the accounting for the entire year of. And so that was like a one line item. I got to 200 items on my list and freaked out. I was like, oh my God. And I shut the computer and I never opened that program again. And that was not the correct solution, just for the record. That is not the solution you should be taking. You, you should be looking at it and saying, oh, okay, I've overcommitted, right? And then going, okay, so I need to delegate some of this stuff. I need to let go of some of this stuff. I need to admit that this isn't going to happen at all this year, right? Maybe it gets pushed till next year or the year after or whatever. 
but you need to get realistic about what you can get accomplished and then only put your energy into those things. And that's how you stop yourself from burning out. Now, item number three, if you get to the point where you are in your procrastination and when, when you think about doing it, your body goes, eh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And your brain goes blank and you shut down and you're just like, <gasps> and then you wander off, okay? That's when your inner child is driving the bus because your inner child doesn't know how to do it. And every time you try and say, oh no, you have to do this, your inner child goes, well, I don't know how. Oh, I don't know how. And then they just run off and go do something else and play, right? And so you need to take your inner child out of the driver's seat. That's a super easy one, right? You just gotta look at your inner child and go, oh baby, I'm so sorry. I know you don't know how. You don't have to know how. This is not for you to know. It's okay. And just see yourself taking them out of the driver's seat and putting them down and saying, go play. And then you sit down in the driver's seat and go, okay, what do I need to know in order to make this happen? And if you go brain blank again, then what you need to do is break it into smaller parts, right? Because sometimes the, the, the thing we've assigned ourselves is too big, right? We don't know how to do it. Well, okay, guess who knows how to do it? Google knows how to do it every time. I promise. So Google it and, and it'll bring it up. And if the thing you, you Google doesn't make any sense to you, then reach out to somebody who, who does understand it and ask for help. Hire somebody to help you. Break it into a smaller part. Break it into smaller pieces so that you can address one piece at a time if it's too much. Sometimes we go to do it and it's too much. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes when we're doing the, the thing, oh, I lost my, my train of thought because Leah made me laugh. <laughs> Hi, Leah. Uh, sometimes when we're doing the thing, it, it requires us to do something that is uncomfortable to confront something in ourselves or to confront another person or to do something we dread, right? Here's the thing about things that you dread. Do them first. Make them the very first thing you do at the beginning of your day. Do not give yourself the option to put it off because it will suck your energy until you do it, okay? So if there's something in that that you're dreading, make sure it's the first thing you do, okay? So those are your solutions. Either there's no energy and you shouldn't be doing it right now, or you're fried and you need to be working on getting things off your plate rather than adding things to your plate and taking a lot of downtime. You know, get outside, da, da, da. There's, there's a great book. If you are fried, there's a great book called Move, Think, Smile by Elia Faucheron. And she is fantastic. And it's completely fantastic for getting you out of burnout. Okay? So if you're going when the idea comes up, you're fried. And three, if you just go blank, your inner child is driving the bus and it's about taking them out of the driver's seat, getting the information you need to do the project, breaking it into smaller parts and accomplishing it in, in bite-sized pieces. Okay, that's how you get out of procrastination. That's how you recognize what it's, what it's founded on because not all procrast procrastination is built the same and that will get you there. I hope this helps. Please comment in the section. Let me know if this has helped you. Uh, if you have any other questions, also comment and let me know. And uh, I'll talk to you next time. All right. Bye.